Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Lone Survivor, the Director's Cut. Now, Lone Survivor is a game I've been wanting to play for a long time, and I recently got the chance to go through it. And, considering the time of the year, I thought this would be a fun game to play, so we're going to jump into it. Now, Lone Survivor was originally released in 2012 for the PC, and it was a like a real big surprise. It was like this really indie darling game that people loved because it invoked a lot of the spirit of earlier survival horror games that at that point were kind of gone. We still had horror games, but the survival aspect, the puzzle solving, the exploration wasn't quite there anymore. And on top of that, this game has a very appealing uh, 2D pixel art style, which kind of added to the, the the specialness and the feel of this game. Now, a year later, in 2013, we get a director's cut of the game. The director's cut of the game added additional content and two extra endings. And on top of that, to make all of this more interesting, this game is pretty much the passion project of a single person, that Jasper Brine right there. And it's kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a really elaborate flash game almost. I don't really know the programming terms and techniques, but this was something that was really kind of cobbled together by someone who just had a lot of passion. Normally, the game is meant to be played with a keyboard, but I'm using a Joy to Key program where I can set up uh, keyboard inputs to correlate with my controller inputs. So if I start having a little trouble or we start getting some hiccups with it, you know why. So we're going to press X to start. And we're already having our first hiccup. Alright, well we had our first hiccup, but I think everything is alright. So let me bring your attention. At the bottom of the screen you see those five dots that are fading out. Each one of those dots represents a different ending. So I've gotten all five endings beforehand which is going to change the way the game plays a little bit as opposed to if it was our first time through the game. I will try to point those differences out when I see them, but if I miss one or two of them, please forgive me. So we are going to start a new game. Alright, so we get the option to erase the current game or go back to the menu. This game only has one save slot. So we're going to erase our current game and start a new one. And so it begins again. Alright, before you start, the ritual is strongly advised. This is sort of like setting up your equipment beforehand. Firstly, for maximum immersion, ensure you are in a dark environment with no interruptions. Well, I'm in neither a dark environment and I cannot guarantee no interruptions. We've already had one. Audio is an important part of the experience. Be sure to use headphones or speakers turned up loud. Okay, I do have my headphones on. Finally, see what you need to see. Be yourself and enjoy the adventure. So we can use A and S to turn up and down the gamma, make it lighter or darker. I have it as light as possible because I want everyone watching at home to be able to see as much as possible. Alright, one more thing. Please pick the phrase which best describes you as a player. Note that this setting cannot be changed once chosen. I don't know if that's accurate. I think you can actually change this during the course of gameplay. But essentially, do we want to play normal or hard? Now, hard mode is... it's not really that much harder. You can't look at your map and you get no menu prompts. But normal allows us to look at the map whenever we like. And we'll also get prompts when we can interact with stuff. So we're going to go normal. To the best of my knowledge, the difficulty doesn't change the, uh, the endings or the story or anything like that. Normal mode selected. So this is different. We're getting a screen here where our main character is laying in bed, cuddling a uh, yellow cat. 
I've got that because I've gone through all five of the endings. If that was not the case, it would just be his portrait to the right, like we had saw earlier. My name is... Not important anymore, I guess. Used to know how long I've been here. Now I've got no idea. Been a while since the outbreak started. That much I know. Hold up with the sound of those things outside. Monsters, I guess you'd call them. As far as I know, I'm the only one left. The lone survivor. Name drop. Can't go on much longer, though. Almost out of supplies. And if there's anyone else alive out there, I need to find them. If nothing else, I don't want to die alone. Alright, so we're kind of going through the game's prologue here. We're going to get a little bit of clues on how to play. So, normally we'd move with the keyboard arrows, but I've got it set to my directional pad. So, left and right to move left and right. Up to move up, down to move down. Which we'll get to use a few times. So, X to interact. So, you interact with the armchair. And I don't want to sit down right now. We can look at the cup of coffee, but I'm not going to do that just yet, because there's this weird guy over here. The man who wears a box. Hi. Nothing at all. Hi. Nothing at all. So, eventually this guy is going to react. He's busy watching that wall. But I think now is a good time to explain one of the mechanics of the game. Why are you wearing a box? Huh. He's breathing, but he's just not responding. Our actions during the course of the game are going to influence our character's mental health. Uh, the better his mental health is, the more positively he'll react to things. The lower his mental health is, well, the more negatively he will react to things. He'll see more disturbing imagery, he'll make more unsettling comments, he'll see things that are awful. This also influences what ending we're going to get. Now, it's really hard to get the worst ending possible. Like, you really gotta try to get his mental state to be as terrible as you can be. To get the good ending, uh, you gotta make some effort to keep his mental health up high. I am going to try to aim for sort of a middle of the road type approach, because I want to show as much of the game as possible, but I don't want to sort of limit myself to doing those things that only get me one ending over the other. And we'll probably get the time to go over all the endings. So I bring that up because talking to this guy is a positive influence on our mental health. Hello? I recommend the coffee. You spoke. I guess I'll take your advice then. Yeah, if we wanted to, we could have just skipped him altogether and drank the coffee. Looks like a double espresso. Alright, let's drink the coffee. Now I'll drink the coffee. Lovely. Oh. Mm, I think I can hear something down there. So, that's the walking sound. It's kind of a silly sound. But we can also hear some, like, noise and distortion. Yeah, it's getting louder. Oh. What's going on here? Well, we're meeting our first enemy. 
that there is called a thin man. Now, that's what it's going to get called during the course of the game. Well, at the end of the game. Damn. It's one of those things. I don't think it can see me. Wait. Looks like there's a hiding spot just behind it. I'll see if I can sneak past. This is going to be one of the main mechanics of dealing with the enemy, is finding these hiding spots. So now we're in the background. The monster can't get us. And now it doesn't know we're there. A minute ago it did. These guys are very receptive to sound and to light. Right now we don't have a light, so it's not a big deal. We also don't have any weapons, so we can't fight with it. And I might as well go through. Oh, and what do we have here? Also, I really like this music. Very Silent Hill. Talk to her. Hello? Hello? Are you okay? What's that you're holding? And go on. Talking about Silent Hill, well, there was a sound effect picked right from it. I've got some sort of pocket flashlight. Let's try switching it on. Oh, and look what was hiding in the dark. Damn, my head. Got a pounding headache. Damn night terrors. No better than the days. Well, good morning, flashlight, old friend. It's time to face the outside world. Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the flashlight off. Because we have a limited battery. Oh, there's a green pill. Let's pick it up. I got some kind of green medicine. Now we can start interacting. This is our apartment. That little X that pops up lets us know that we can interact with that item. And I feel like I've had a past life. And if I sleep, I'll forget about it. Well, we're not going to sleep. Sleep is how we save. Whether I sleep or not, I'll all be lost. Let's see if I can get anything. We the survivors. Praying for. In 203. Hmm, that's all I could get. Hmm, I wonder if I should head to 203 first. Maybe there's someone alive in there. So the radio is where we can go to to get hints about what to do next. The diary? Let's have a look. Nothing exciting happened today. Tried to eat an insect I caught, but it's no use. Since it's just me now, I have to get out of here. I need to find a weapon, something long range. Those sons of bitches are too dangerous up close. I don't want their nasty disease getting on me. Then maybe I can get something to eat. Oh, I remember where I put their key. It's on the sofa in the living room. Don't know where the key for their bedroom is, though. That's the latest entry. So the way he talks about it kind of gives us the impression that this is not his apartment. He's just using it. There's something written on the door in faint chalk. Okay, let's see. So here are the controls. That's how to interact in the shoot, which I have set to my A button. Weapon toggle mode, which I think I have set to my X button. Walking around, how to open the inventory. You can save the game when you use your bed. You can flashlight toggle, reload, and use the map. We've already changed the gamma. I'm not changing the screen aspect. We're playing in normal mode, not expert mode. And those are important hotkeys for later. Igniting flares, placing rotting meat, and drinking health tonics. Hmm locked. Need a key to open it. Alright, 
So I'm going to hit the back button, which is going to open up our inventory. So here in the medicine part of the inventory, we have a green pill. Let's look at it. Some kind of drug, I think. And then the keys, we have the flashlight. We wouldn't get far without this puppy. Right now it's turned off. It's at 100% of its battery, but that is going to go down fast. And then finally we have notes. We don't have any though. That's going to change quick. So there's a battery. I'm going to pick that one up. It's faded. Been there a long time, I guess. I'm not going to pick up a lot of batteries at first, because I want to show what happens to you if our lone survivor runs out of batteries. And I don't know whose it is. Those aren't mine. Look deeply into the mirror or leave it. Well, checking out mirrors too often can have negative effects on you. So we're just going to look deeply into it now. Not bad considering. It feels like it's trying to draw me to some other place. But I don't know where it wants that to be. Locked. Need a key to open it. It's locked. I need a key to open it. Alright, so here's the kitchen. There's the front door key. I got the key to 206. So that's where I left it. I'll sit down if I have a good enough reason to. Right now he has no reason to be relaxing on the couch. But that will change over time. Wait, what's that smell? Even with my mask on, it's making me dizzy. Well, let's take a chance. Let's look what's inside. Let's see what it is. I can hardly bear to touch this. It's piles of rotting meat. I'll take six pieces of meat for now. It's the most I can handle. I don't want to carry any more than six of these chunks. It's the most I can handle. So those chunks of meat are going to be useful to help us distract the monsters. My stove. I don't remember it happening, but it's run out of gas. I'll have to find some more. Well, maybe we'll get the chance. Hmm. Some kind of cat plush on here. Might as well take it. Not going to do any good with no power. So that cat plush is the same cat plush we were holding in the opening screen. Isn't he adorable? I think this cat plush is called Sleepy Cat. We can look at it, we can talk to it, we also get the chance to give it to other characters. Looking at it and talking to it, talking to it is good for our health. How's it going, Sleepy Cat? All right, got some kind of diary page. So let's read it. And we'll look at it first. A faded old piece of paper with a childish scroll. It reads, I can't trust any of them anymore. Any of those bastards could be diseased. There's only one way to survive this. And that's to put a bullet in every last one of their heads. We all know what I'm saying is the truth. Let's not try and deny it anymore. I'll be waiting with the survivors. There's a name at the bottom. Draco. I don't know the person who wrote this. I'm more interested in the other survivors. If there are any. So we're going to find notes like that during the course of the game. Giving us hints on what to do. Let's look at the key. It's a regular front door key. Generally speaking, the advice is sound, but not always the best choice. Now let's see. Use the key to 206. I'll get rid of it now. I should probably get some sleep before I go out there. 
Oh, I forget what I'm doing. So that's kind of the game's hint to save before going out. Now I've gotten reasonably good at going through this quickly, but we're gonna take our time, we're gonna poke our heads around, we're gonna explore, we're gonna check out stuff. I feel a little better. Our lone survivor is eventually going to get tired and hungry. And both of which will affect him negatively. Alright, the map of the second floor. I got a map of the wing court second floor. Alright, so it's opening up the map automatically. It looks like something's already marked on here. Let's take a look. So here's our map. We're the sort of blue square, and we want to go to where that red question mark is. 203. Yeah, we've already gotten some hints that something is going on at 203. Since the game plays in 2D, it can be a little confusing understanding exactly where you're going, but you do kind of get used to it pretty quick, and the map is here to sort of give you an idea of where you're going and how. That was Chie's place, wasn't it? Why would anyone mark it on here? I'll try and make my way there anyway. Oh yeah, that letter was pinned to the map. Let's read it now. Might as well read the letter then. Don't set off without a map. Even if you do know your way around. Things keep changing, you see. By the way, I think I have a way to get past those things. I worked it out. They're attracted to the stench of decay. When I'm having trouble getting past them, I leave some rotten meat down to one side of a hiding spot. Then I hide as they come towards me. It's best to avoid them, you see. No signature on it. Well, how about this door? <laughs> if only they hadn't locked it when the outbreak started. So right now our flashlight is off, so we can't necessarily act, interact with everything. It's too dark. So I'm going to turn on the light, and it's Chuck. Sir Chuck. Chuck here is the plant in the hallway that the survivor takes care of. Chuck is also a reference to a number of different um, LucasArts games where they just have potted plants that are named Chuck hanging out and about. So here's a hiding spot, and there's a monster. We want to get that monster on the other side of the hiding spot. So if I hit two, you drop a piece of meat, and now it's going to come running. That's the only monster here, so that's fine. That meat will only distract it for a little while. Okay, gotta go in here. And look, there's a monster right there. Now, our flashlight is not on, so it's not charging us. But if it notices us, it is going to come after us. It's locked. I guess I should try again later. I wonder if anyone's in there. Right now, there's no hiding spot or any way to get around it. So we're just going to check the other door. Hmm, some good books in their collection. Borrowed a few in my time. There's monsters about. I don't think it's a good idea. Ooh, another note. I got a crumpled old note. So we've already read the old letter. It's pinned to the map I found. But let's look at the old note. A crumpled message. I strongly advise against listening to Draco. The man's a danger to what's left of society. It may be right that you need to defend yourself when there's no other solution. What I'm trying to say is, there are usually other ways around the problem than violence. Think on it. There's no signature at the bottom. But we haven't gotten a weapon yet. They only make things here. They only make things here. You coming? 
So he's walking around barefoot. That's why we get in that silly kind of like ham slapping sound. I mentioned that your character's mental health sort of affects the game a bit. And what that note was just telling us was that there are different ways other than fighting to deal with problems. Because fighting with enemies, taking damage, damaging enemies, killing enemies, affects our mental health. And if it gets low enough, well, we get different endings, and it also affects the survivor differently. It is entirely possible to play the entire game without having to fire a single shot, fight a single monster. It's not easy, but it is possible. And I don't know if it's a requirement, but it sure helps you get the better endings. No, I don't want to go through the door. Disgusting. I don't even want to imagine how this happened. No, it's just my imagination. What the hell is that? Oh. Well, our only choice is to enter the hole. Okay, here goes nothing. And we are traveling down a very dark, very unpleasant looking corridor. It's not your imagination, we are actually starting to slow down. There's no way this is still my apartment block. Is my mind playing tricks on me? Oh, there's a th thin man. So we're gonna run. And these sort of nasty, bloody, organy type walls behind us. I'm never going back in there. I'm tired. I'm through. I thought I was never going to end. Hey, there's another mirror. It's just like the one in my apartment. Okay, we're going to pick up the squid. I got the dried squid on a stick. Too dark to see. So let's turn on the light. I got the bag of prawn crackers. Alright, well he said he was tired. And there's this mirror here. Let's look deeply into it. And I could use a bath, but... What just happened to me? Did I black out or something? I don't know how I got here. Well, I guess it's good to be home. So the mirrors kind of act as teleporters. They'll bring us back and forth from our home and from wherever we just were. So he's tired. Let's get some rest. Mm, didn't do much good. He's probably pretty hungry at this point. So hungry. So he even mentioned it. So, uh, we're not going to look at the map. We're going to go to our inventory. We're going to look at some of this stuff that I haven't taken the time to look at. They power my flashlight. Chunks of decaying meat. Why am I carrying these around? Alright, so we can drop them, and you know that gets the monster's attention. We can eat them. Well, not really. If we try to eat them, he's going to say, no, it's disgusting. But, but each time we consider it, his mental health drops a little bit. And he'll eventually get to the point where he says, you know what? This doesn't look so bad. He'll never actually eat it, but he'll get closer and closer to considering it. Do those things really survive this long? Ah, crispy and tasty. These have survived well. Need to eat. So let's eat the squid on a stick. I'm not so sure about this one. 
Ugh, disgusting. Did fill me up, though. Uh, eating items also heals us a little bit, so it is worthwhile. Alright, so we're going to look into the mirror, and it's going to teleport us back to where we were. Using the mirror too often also has a negative effect on our health. Well, our mental health. Oh, and there's the monster. We're on the other side of that monster from earlier. It's jammed shut. So our flashlight's off. It's not going to come after us. But if I get too close, it will. Okay. Damn. I'm going to have to creep past this one. If I can just get behind it, that is. Well, he's already moved far enough. So we're going to sneak... Okay, it's starting to come back towards us, so we'll just wait a second. And that mask on the survivor's face looks like a great big old grin. I think this is the entrance to 204, but the number's been removed. It's locked. Maybe I should try later. Okay. Yeah, let's get away from that monster. Made it. Alright, we're at the West Fire Exit. See, we're all the way there on the left of the map. And there should be stairs down. Hmm. They're destroyed. No way I'm getting down there. I'll have to try the other side of the building. I got some kind of diary page. I've missed this diary page so many times because it just sort of blends in. An old scrap of paper. It reads, I only come out at night. That's simple common sense. They're more docile and there's less of them about. I found if I pop them right in the head with my colt, they fall to the floor like sacks of skinny jelly. Another thing I notice, once they get up in your grill, it's best to shoot them in the leg so they back off a bit. It's satisfying too. The name at the bottom is Draco. So Draco's giving us some hints about how to use the firearm when we finally get it. We'll deal more damage if we aim up and hit the enemy in the head than if we just aim straight and hit them in the body. Unfortunately, though, they have to be a little closer. And if they get too close, we can aim down at their legs. And if we shoot them in the legs, they'll actually stagger backwards. Alright, so there's... 203 right there. We're going to keep going ahead a little bit. We can hear the monster noises. And look, a green pill. Some kind of green medicine. Now I'll have to find another way around. Oh, what about 202? There's something in 202. It's a blue pill. We have not come across a blue pill yet. The lock is broken and I can't open it. I can hear one of those things just through here. For some reason, there's a butcher hook hanging in front of the door. Now, that's a little odd, but we do know that right behind that door is one of those creatures. Let's take a look at the blue medicine. I'm going to do that a lot. I'm going to accidentally hit the map button. Some kind of drug, I think. We haven't had any of the drugs yet. But we'll have some eventually. Long short of it is, is if you take a pill before going to bed, uh, they'll have different effects. It's Chie's place. I think it's a New York skyline. One of those black and white photos of a factory. Oh. It smells of perfume, so I'm not looking in there. I think there might be mothballs in there. I don't like them. Got a woman's touch. Just a books and a few papers inside. Okay, we're going to leave that doll alone for the moment. I don't need anything from their bathroom. Just a couple of coat hangers.
I was hoping to look at that picture, but the game has other plans. Not going in their bedroom yet. He's not going in there yet. All right, we made it. Party time. No, don't go through that door. Uh, hi? Did you bring her doll? I don't want to talk about that. Talk about what? Until you show me you can even hold it, let alone talk about it, I've got nothing to say to you. So, she's talking about a doll. She's not talking about this doll. In fact, if we try to give her this doll, well, we get one of the different endings. That's because I've already gone through the game. But if we had not gone through the game, and we offered her the doll, she would say, you know what, I'm not ready to take this yet. Try giving it to other people. So as we go through it this time, we're going to try giving it to other people. All right, Benzito. You think it's safe to party here? I feel pretty safe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's monsters out there. You must have seen them. The hideous creatures out there. Well, let's relax for a minute, shall we? I'm trying to save you. I'm quite safe, I assure you. <laughs> um, how long have you been here? So how long have been has this been going on? I need to know what's going on. Talk to me, please. Yeah, we really need to calm down here. It can't be doing you any good to worry about yourself like this. So talking to these characters is actually good for our health score. So we're going to take the time and say hello. And I jumped way too fast to the dialogue. Lovely party, isn't it? Lovely party? What are you talking about? I said lovely party, my man. You're insane. There's monsters out there. Do you notice what happened to the world? Nothing apart from the usual crap. Uh, yeah, I guess this is a great party. I'm having the time of my life. Wish I could just stay here. It feels safe. But I need to survive. Somehow. Just get into the music, brother. Simmer on down. You dig? I don't really know what you mean. Well, that's Kenny and Benzo. And that's me hitting the wrong button again. But we're going to give them Sleepy Cat. Uh, here you go, Kenny. It's a cat plush for you. Wow, thanks, man. He's so cute. But I couldn't possibly take him off you. I'm sure you're going to need him, man. Why don't you hold on to him, eh? Are you sure, Kenny? Yeah, I think you need him more than me. In fact, let me give you a little something, little brother. Really, Kenny, there's no need. Hey, it's nothing. Just something I thought you might dig. Here you go. We got the Mexican Cola. Wow, Mexican Cola. Oh boy, oh boy. It's a sort of fan's wildest dream. How'd you know I love this stuff, Kenny? I guessed. Well, you guessed well. Thanks again. De nada, amigo. Now, how about you, Benzito? Would you like the cat? Well, since we're in here, let's look at the Mexican Cola. Kenny gave... Kenny kindly gave it to me. Kenny knows what I like. So we could drink this, and it would be super good for us. Because it's a special item just for the new game. But we're going to hang on to it and save it for a little later. Because there's something special we can do with it. Okay. Benzito. Would you like the cat? Um, Benzito? Yes. Uh, would you like this cat plush? His name is Sleepy Cat. That's sweet of you. He's quite something, ain't he? That little guy. I guess. Well, it's okay. I can see he means a lot to you. Got you through some tough times. Something like that? Something like that. 
Well, I might have something to give you. Might help you a bit, you know? Okay. Uh, thanks, Benzito. Lettuce leaves? They're healthy and nutritious. And besides, I have a feeling you'll need them. At least one of them, anyway. Okay. Thanks, I guess. So, not only is that an extra item he gave us, he also gave us a hint that we're going to need at least one of them for something. And this is, I think, our first time we saw the combined option. Now, we don't have anything to combine this with yet, but we're going to find food items and other things that we can combine to make them more effective. Right now, we're not going to do anything with the leaves, but look at them. Beautiful, crisp, iceberg lettuce leaves. How they survived in the outbreak, I'll never know. I'm just glad they're with me. I need to find the right meal to add them to. I don't like them on their own. In fact, we'll come across some items that aren't great for us to eat on their own. In fact, we're going to find some items that we shouldn't be eating, period. But we'll get to that when we get to it. So Chie wants us to get a doll. It's this doll right here. I got a weird old doll. And let's look at it. It's a dusty purple old thing. Gives me the creeps. So let's bring her the doll. Uh, hi. I can see you're holding it. Now give it to me. Well, if she wants it, she can have it. Here you go, then. Thanks for that. I know it must have been hard for you. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't, huh? Well, I have what you asked for. Meet me outside when you're ready for it. I don't know what you're saying. But hey, why not? So let's go meet her outside. Well, we're on the balcony, and there's a very clear light shining on the handgun. Now you might think, hey, let's go out and grab the handgun. You could, but then Chie will disappear. Let's go talk to Chie first. I can see devastation for miles around. What happened here? How did this disease begin to spread? It makes me sick. Chie? It's okay, just take it. What the hell are you talking about? The gun over there. So you realize I need the protection at least. And I'm not one to judge. No, nope, she doesn't say anything different. So we grabbed the firearm and I got the handgun. I feel a little safer, I guess. Wait, where'd she go? So now that we have a firearm, we can press the X button to use the firearm. Now we move a little differently when we have the firearm. We can only move forward and back. We can aim up and we can aim down or just fire ahead of us. If I put the gun away, then we start moving normally again. Hungry. Oh. Not the map. We got some prawn crackers. We got some lettuce leaves. So let's eat the prawn crackers. Mmm, crispy. And look what happened. Damn! I had no choice but to take him down. Now we actually do have a choice. We can put the gun away and just walk out. <laughs> 